We'd like to welcome everyone here this evening here to our uh, Cadillac Planning Commission meeting. Uh, we haven't been here in a bit. Actually, this is a special meeting for us here um, for April 16th of 2019. If I might uh, ask everybody if you have a cell phone, please turn it off so it doesn't disrupt his taping back there in the corner, Mr. Judd. And then if I could have everybody please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Moving right along. Start with roll call. Is that going to be you, Mr. Coy, sir? Hi, it'll be me. Philkins. Here. Smith. Here. Schultz. Here. Bunce. Here. Greg. Here. Wellman. Here. Bent. Here. Hudson. Here. Thank you. Before I get going here too far, I'm just going to uh, ask for an approval here of uh, the agenda here again for this evening, April 16th, 2019. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Wilkins, Mr. Yes. Smith. Mr. Chair. Sure. Pardon me. Yes, sir. May I kindly ask for an amendment to the agenda this evening as oh. you're approving it to include, yes. as I took the glasses off to clean them, uh, consideration um, of our first amendment to the protective covenants and restrictions for the James E. Poffin Industrial Park. Yes, sir. Thank you. Can we make that 1B? So to say, and I'll put him right in underneath this. So I'm, or I'm gonna, for my own reference. So, on tonight's agenda, we're adding city manager to give us an update. And that, and that issue, correct? And you're yes. gonna do it yes. under new business, is that, Mr. You're Chair? Gonna want we're, that under new actually, business. he's gonna do it before we get rolling too far. We can do it wherever you guys want. No. Unless you want it under new business, <laughs> I don't care. We can keep Marcus here all night long. I'll, I am, I'll be here. We just don't want to keep everybody else here. All <laughs> Does he need yeah. a vote? Let's, Let's do it after everybody else is here. Is there going to be a vote for what you need added? Yes. 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 Oh, I want a new business. Program. New business. Yeah. Okay. We're going to put you down there under the business mm -hmm. five. So do we have to remotion that? Can prove it as amended. Or we just, we're I'll good. make that motion yeah. to I'll approve the amended it. agenda. <laughs> Perfect. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that great. We're good. Roll, please. Greg. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bauman. Yes. Bunce. Yes. Fent. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Butfin. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Again, I guess I got to follow my thing. Okay, um, I have a spot here right now that um, I'm going to open here to a public comment, uh, which will be for Geesman Real Estate Development Incorporated. If I might bother Mr. Geesman to come to the podium, state his name, and write down your address. Don't need to verbally say that. Sure. Thank you. Working you in here. I am Jeff Geesman. I'm here with my son Jake. Um, First of all, I'd like to thank you for fitting me in. I know you guys have a busy agenda tonight, especially with the meetings that haven't taken place the last couple of months. Uh, I have currently been working on developing some property on Seneca Place and ultimately w would like to come in front of the commission to request approval or consideration uh, for a subdivision behind the lots that I'm developing on Seneca. And tonight, I just have some packets to hand out. Just a quick overview, um, kind of to let you guys know what, what's forthcoming. And also prepared to answer any questions or um, anything you'd like. So having said that, I do have a packet for each of you. Would you like them now or would like me to hand them out? Gonna have time to really look at them. So no, I'm not. I'm not asking you to look at them tonight. I okay. just was gonna sure, if you want to bring them up or, or just okay. set them right there with Ryan, and we'll just pass. <coughs> them. Okay. Um, what's in those packets <coughs> is my letter to the board, to the commission. Um, 
<coughs> a concept plan for land development. We've already done a land division request and it was approved for the six parcels along Seneca. Uh, we're going to be looking to request approval starting with the city and then you know ultimately if, if it passes there going to the state for a subdivision behind it for an additional 30 to 32 lots for affordable housing. Um, the have received great success and support on the first two houses we put up. Both were um, listed and sold before completion. Um, I think Mike is, or, or John has put up, this was the first one, and that sold a couple months before completion. The second one is a two-story, just to give you a little different look. Um, that's kind of the type of houses that we're looking to bring to the area. Um, all the lots meet or exceed um, you know any of the requirements for the R2 zoning that's currently in place um, you know, in, in my letter I pointed out that we put up, we put in underground services including city water and sewer main um, underground electric underground natural gas service um, we're planning to do exactly the same and meet all requirements of both the city and the DEQ moving forward so that, that's really my spiel tonight was to get this in your hands rather than to bring it to you and hopefully give you a chance to look at it before the next meeting you know I'm hoping that I can be on the agenda for the next meeting um, I've been working closely with Mike and John um, and you know Cadillac needs this we have a shortage you know I, I reference a couple reports um, in my letter to you folks that states you know we have a shortage of inventory of houses in the city of Cadillac in that affordable bracket um, I know firsthand because I've spent a couple of years trying to purchase some to either rehab or to own and hold as rentals and it's nearly impossible to find so um, again appreciate your time um, Mike told me I had three minutes. I've probably used that up. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there's any questions at this point or if we um, just want to come back at, at the next meeting and go from there. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank all of you. Next, I need just from the board uh, approval of the December 18th, 2018. That was also a special meeting minutes. Uh, of note, the, there, there was for our people that follow us, January, February, and March of 2019 uh, meetings were canceled. Okay. <laughs> they were. Lost the long delay from December anyway. So hopefully you all had a chance to read that at least once. <laughs> I move the uh, minutes be approved. Bauman. I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Fenst. Bauman. Yes. Bent. Yep. Bunce. Yes. Pilkins. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Greg. Yes. Putfin. Yes. Thank you. Okay, we have a few public hearings in front of us this evening. Um, the first public hearing here which is uh, going to deal with the New Hope Shelter we are going to do in two stages so we're going to open a public hearing at a point here uh, to discuss the special land use permit that will then get discussed the public hearing get closed we'll discuss it then we'll take a vote on it then I'll go ahead and if provided this all moves forwards I will open a second public hearing on New Hope Shelter um, for the rezoning portion of that from RM1 to RM2. Okay, just to get that spit out there. At this stage, I'd like Mr. Wallace to enlighten us on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to give a presentation on both the uh, special land use and the rezoning uh, since they're so intertwined. But as the chairman has mentioned, uh, the public hearings will be broken to two. 
the um, special land use will be acted on first and if it should get a favorable uh, vote it would be then uh, subject to the rezoning effort the rezoning effort would move on to the city council the special land use uh, ends with the uh, action by uh, this board so with that I'll, I'll get into the presentation uh, the current owner of the property is the Church of the Nazarene. Uh, they are looking at uh, selling the property to New Hope Shelter. Mark Mogan is here representing uh, New Hope Shelter, and uh, he, along with some of his uh, other board or consultants, would be available to answer questions. Uh, with the special land use, the applicant is requesting to operate uh, a combined group family uh, homeless shelter in an RM2 zoning district. As you may recall, it wasn't terribly long ago that we created the text changes in the ordinance which allowed for the uh, uh, combined homeless shelter. Essentially, uh, the rationale is to move uh, all the group shelters and the individual family shelters under one roof as a centralized facility for the homeless. Uh, the rezoning request uh, is to rezone a site that is on Lincoln Street, uh, just east <coughs> of the Wexford County Jail from an R1 residential district to an RM2 residential district. And as you also may recall, uh, the uh, combined shelters were limited to the multifamily districts of which the RM2 district is one. Uh, also, as I mentioned, uh, there will uh, be end up being a women's and men's group shelter within this facility, and then also the individual family uh, shelters. The site, uh, you can see on this map, uh, at the top center, you can see the identification of the county jail site, uh, the site uh, for this special land use and this rezoning. Uh, is identified on the map as the proposed homeless shelter uh, site. You can see the Church of the Nazarene uh, owns property immediately to the south. Uh, you also see that there are uh, other church affiliations in the area being the Christian Reformed Church, the United Methodist Church, and the Michigan Conference of uh, Seventh Day. Uh, are all in that area. Other uses include uh, a few single-family homes and a medical office facility uh, located uh, uh, right on the corner of Warren Street and East Division. The uh, land use in the area is as the map showed, is dominated uh, by churches. Uh, according to, con you know, with conversations with Mark, these churches that are in the immediate area have all been supportive of the uh, homeless shelter project, and uh, Mark could comment uh, more on that later. The <coughs> master plan land use designation for this area is consistent with the proposed use, uh, including the East Division Corridor District and the mixed-use Crosby Road District. So um, with what we do have in the master plan, it would be consistent with what they are proposing. Uh, the planned uses for this area include religious institutions, multiple family residential, senior and assisted living housing, and professional offices. Those are all uh, <coughs> recommendations contained in our master plan. The uh, special land use uh, is to uh, meet both our general standards within the zoning code and also the specific standards. Uh, you've probably been through a number of cases where we've gone through the general standards uh, relating to land use uh, ability, environmental issues, and so forth. But uh, you may recall that when we went through the uh, changes in the text for the zoning ordinance, all the different things that we specified for the operations of group shelters and so forth, and that is all spelled out in detail uh, in the ordinance. Their application, um, 
of which you all have copies, uh, goes over all the information for the specific standards and uh, it's their feeling that they've uh, supplied what is necessary to, to meet to not only the general standards but the uh, specific standards. Uh, the, when it comes time to uh, take an action on the special land use, uh, it would be that the Planning Commission would grant a special land use permit to Mr. Mark Mogan on behalf of New Hope Shelter to operate a com combination group family shelter on Lincoln Street as legally described in the application, subject to the following conditions that the rezoning of the subject property from RM1 to RM2 be successfully carried out, that the City Utilities Department approve all utility connections and locations, and that the current local need for the homeless be set at the current ordinance maximum <coughs> of 60 beds unless another number is to be determined. So that would be uh, beginning conditions. Also, that the maximum daily time away from this facility for residents be set at six hours. You may also recall that one of the reasons we were looking at uh, going to this whole new strategy of centralization was an improvement in uh, the time that they could uh, be in the shelter and uh, there'd be less time where they would have to spend uh, time away from the facility, especially in cold weather that there be an administrative review of all specific standards. I think for the most part they're pretty well spelled out, uh, but if uh, I thought it would be beneficial to just have me designated to, to uh, go over all those in mo uh, specific detail to make sure that they're uh, met 100%. Uh, that there be an administrative review of the site plan, uh, which is uh, all the department heads is normally what we do for a commercial site plan and we would be looking at all the various utility uh, line connections and uh, parking areas and so forth. Uh, that the applicant uh, slash developer identify and supply any required state approvals. That all other homeless shelters being operated by New Hope uh, in the city of Cadillac be vacated for use as a homeless shelter within 24 months of a final occupancy permit being granted for the new combination group family shelter. And again, this is to realize uh, the direction uh, for the shelter, which was eventually to, uh, over time, consolidate and bring everything under one roof. And we recognize that there's some time uh, needed to, to carry that out. So that that's basically um, the rundown on the special land use uh, and the rezoning. Uh, it's staff's uh, feeling that the, uh, especially with respect to the rezoning, that it, it is headed in the direction that reinforces our master plan. And uh, it, we're looking right now at the future uh, maybe zoning map revision to the, to the zoning ordinance. And uh, as of right now, our thoughts are that we would uh, be placing this property within uh, the, the, the appropriate uh, zoning district that would be consistent with this. Uh, with respect to uh, special land use, uh, you've seen all the proposals that they have made relative to their wraparound services, their counseling services, the fact that they uh, work with the individuals to uh, uh, find employment, that they uh, do counseling on the various needs that they may have and uh, we've gone through that a number of times with prior uh, actions that we've taken but uh, if, you, if you have questions on the specific activities uh, you could ask uh, uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the public hearing or just after the public hearing of the applicant. But with that uh, I, I think it's appropriate to start the public hearing. Again, the first one would be on the special land use, which is the nature of uh, the use being compati compatible operationally uh, within an R2 district in that, on that specific site, subject to the methods and uh, processes that they've proposed to operate the facility. And then the second public hearing would be on the appropriateness of the actual rezoning uh, for, 
uh, from the R1 to the RM2 district. So uh, with that, you can uh, start the public hearings. John, did you have any conditions anywhere, guidelines or anything on the special land use? No, I think okay. my thoughts were that um, that they have. Uh, I was content with with the uh, rules and regulations that uh, they've been historically uh, proposing for the operation of the facility. Um, I think. Uh, if you think there's something in there that uh, probably needs to have some specifics, I think um, it could be appropriate to uh, state that in the eventual motion. Okay. If everybody's ready, uh, at this time then we'll go ahead and open the public hearing for the special land use, um, again here for the uh, New Hope Shelter. Anyone wishing to speak in favor, get right up there. Thank you. Um, Mike Filiomeni again. I'm the attorney from McCurdy, Wotilla, and Porteous that's been working with the um, New Hope Shelter. Um, I'm not going to restate the um, submissions or Mr. Wallace's presentation. Um, I just had a couple of comments, um, and you might have uh, picked up on it, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, uh, the specific... Uh, standards and, and requirements uh, for this type of use are significant. And um, it was a little difficult to tie them all together into a nice package, but I think if you, if you uh, looked at exhibits E, F, G, and H, you'll find specifically that the management uh, policies that are required under the ordinance are all there. You might have to dig for them, but they're all there. Um, we um, had a comment with regard to um, uh, the uh, conditions that were set out um, for the special use uh, permit by Mr. Wallace. Um, they seem fine and appropriate and uh, along the lines that we've been talking about. Um, and I think uh, Mr. Wallace indicated that there are going to be some things coming up um, in this whole development, and if we can just add um, uh, a condition that would catch all of those into a catch-all that would allow Mr. Wallace to, if he determines that there's something else more specific that we need, that he let us know and that we, we meet that condition um, along the way. Um, so that would be sort of a catch-all number nine. Um, and then we had one request for uh, consideration on the uh, timing uh, for the abandonment and consolidation. <clears throat> 18 months is pretty quick, and, and there are, um, as you know, several... 24. 24. It was changed to 24. Oh, I was looking at a... Okay, we talked about 24. Um, I was looking at an old recommendation. I'm sorry. Um, never mind. Thank you. <laughs> Glad we fixed that. Okay. Mike, how was that uh, number nine that you wanted to put in any different than number five that uh, he's already got in here? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I maybe appreciated uh, the reference then to the building permit um, and the special use permit. I wasn't sure. It could very well be that it covers both, but when I read that, I, I wasn't. Anyone else in our audience this evening wishing to speak in favor of the special land use change? I'm Mark Mogan, and of course I uh, support the use of it. I'm open to any questions. I uh, you know there's some new faces here that uh, if you don't quite understand exactly what we're working towards, uh, just give you the nickel tour. We work out of five houses right now, and we're trying to consolidate down to one just the day-to-day -day minutia along with big picture items of trying to hit five places. When you talk about keeping it open just six hours, you know, being out six hours a day, to have five facilities to staff all those is something that just isn't within our 
our reach. And also, uh, to bring all those things together, we offer case management uh, services, uh, you know, housing, to find housing, and also to be a place for all of the other myriad of agencies in our community that help the homeless so they know where they can come and find them as opposed to they're in house number one, two, three, or four, or five. Yeah. So anyway, that's a nickel tour. I won't take any more time. If you have any questions, I'd be glad I to do. Why are they only allowed six hours away from the house per day? Well, we, less, than, less than five years ago, we couldn't stay open any more than 12 hours, basically, 7 to 7. And through the years, it's been our goal to get to 24-hour, to be there, to have it open for 24 hours. You know, a lot of people that find jobs are finding second and third shift jobs and things like that. We're not there financially yet. We're working, we're working to the Lord. That's our goal. We're not there yet. But we, uh, we definitely, uh, right now, uh, at the women's shelter, we're in the six hours, and the men's uh, is close to that. But we, uh, when we get to one facility, it'll be easy for us, easier, not easy, but easier for us to staff. All right. Anybody got anything else for Mark before we sit? No? Anyone else uh, in the audience this evening? Good evening. I'm Art. I helped. I'm a former board member with New Hope, now just a volunteer. Uh, last time I was here, you asked what churches were coming forward. I'm with Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Our board has had an internal vote of support for it. We have a large uh, nursery program going there, daycare center. So it was a significant event for them to have it come in. And we got a good, clean bill of health from their side. So Awesome. I'm really happy for what work you have all done and how the churches have our lives thrown in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else yet this evening? Again, in favor, and then I'll swing the pendulum the other way. But Okay, everybody's good on that end. Anyone here against the special land use change? He's happy with it. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Uh, at this stage, then, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing on this portion. We'll discuss this and get to part two. Okay. Board. Uh, two, two quick questions, if I could, Please. John. Um, the special land use is of an RM2, so it's going to be subject to the rezoning request that will come after, correct? That is correct. Okay. okay. So if, for the sake of argument, the rezoning doesn't move forward or the city council doesn't approve it, the special land use would be? Would would not be valid. Okay. Okay. Um, second question, and I think it was just to your question, John, you mentioned maximum of six hours. Was it possible that it was, it's more like the maximum time in is 18? It just kind of, yeah, that was my confusion. Yeah, just be yeah that they can't, yeah, that they can't be, be forced to be away six. for longer than six Got hours. Got it. Okay. So what if they get a job and they're working 12? So what happens yeah, then? Well, it's, that's okay. No, no, it's not a maximum no. that they, <laughs> they, they don't, um, they don't have to be inside the shelter 18. Okay. They correct. just can't be in the shelter more than 18. Okay. Correct. Is that? That makes it simple. Which used to be 12. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they are working down. <coughs> so confused. Yeah, right. I understood it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to them. Uh, you'll get it. <laughs> I, there was confusion. No, they were confusing. Oh, okay. Okay. Accommodate working hours, right? Mostly. There. Right. Yep. Anything else, okay. anybody? Discuss this for right. yeah. many times. So. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll move to approve. I'll second it. Uh, with the conditions, with Mr. Conditions. Greg and Mr. The Smith. And with listed. the conditions. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Roll, please. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Bauman. Yes. Philkins. Yes. Bunce. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Greg. Yes. Smith. Yes. Fent. Yes. Putvin. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay. This is just 
Now we'll open part two of this public hearing, which is for the rezoning from R1 to RM2 for the property located on Lincoln Street in Cadillac for the New Hope Shelter. Okay. Having said that, anyone in favor of moving forwards with the R1 to RM2, please give us your input. Hello, I'm Troy Baxter, I pastor Cornerstone Church here in the area and been involved with uh, New Hope for a little over a year. And uh, uh, for reasons that have already been stated, the, the proximity of the churches that are involved and a lot of the people that we are going to be helping will have prior uh, uh, residence, residency in the county jail. Um, I feel like this is a good location. Uh, I think it's a good uh, human service corridor, and uh, it, it speaks well of uh, what we're trying to do as a community to um, minister to the people that are kind of down and out. So um, I think that this special use permit uh, for this location, having support from uh, a local church, the Nazarene Church, uh, especially is uh, largely gifted uh, some some property there is uh, is a good gesture and uh, now that we have uh, several of the other churches in the neighborhood in fact all of them have uh, voiced uh, support and involvement uh, I see this uh, community coming together uh, to address this need as a community-wide um, uh, effort as well as uh, people that are, are not here or represented tonight uh, but the Amish community have, have voiced to me that they would love to plug in to this build out. And uh, also with Habitat for Humanity, their directors have also said they would love to as well. So I, I see it as a real good uh, location and a uh, community wide uh, ministry to help people. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience in favor of the rezone? Okay. I know most everybody was. By chance, anyone in the audience against the rezoning? Now would be the time to tell us. Is all. Okay. There being no one, we'll go ahead at this time and close the second public hearing. Okay. Church support, lots of community support. Absolutely. The win win. I'd make a motion if. Here, here, there's a recommended motion up there. Yep. yep. <coughs> Perfect timing. Wonderful. <laughs> Bauman makes that motion. Bauman makes that motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Seconded by, sorry. I'll second it. Mr. Fent. Roll call, please. Smith. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Greg. Yes. Fent. Yes. Bunce. Yes. Philkins. Yes. Bauman. Yes. Putman. Yes. Thank you. All right. We'll be there for the grand opening. No. <laughs> 18 months. No, 24. <laughs> <laughs> If I can say something, having been involved with the homeless shelter way back, oh, way back in its early stages and even talking back then about doing this, you know, and not knowing how it would ever turn out, seeing this at this stage is huge. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. And I, I well, definitely it, support that whole thing. I'm so glad that there's a bunch of people here that support it and not Excellent. against it. Yeah. Well, there. Really uh, we're, we're not. You got, we're not used to that. All I can yes. remember is the docks. <laughs> that was one of the that. emotional, most emotional yeah. things that we went through. Mm -hmm. This, this is cool. This is a no mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. And and they'll be able to do a better job with. Oh, it. it well, you guys just lost yeah, your audience. It'll, <laughs> it'll take into consideration. Where a lot of what variables. did you guys tell them? <laughs> <laughs> Free popcorn out there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay, we're, we're waiting on one of our members, so I guess we'll drag our feet for a second. <laughs> Amen, brother. Yeah, we can. I, I was just thinking that. You'd lead it. It almost would have been appropriate. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it would have been. I think it's just cool. I'm so sorry it's taking so long to get here. Yep. <laughs> John got yeah, up there wondering. Everybody liked it, just didn't like where it was. The group. I kind of hope the back down. <laughs> Don't even go there. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, ah, that must lock, huh, Joe? Oh, waiting on me? <laughs> that must Excuse lock. Excuse me. <laughs> you need yeah. Okay. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> not to put you on the Okay. We have one more public hearing yet. Figure that's why y'all hanging out. Okay. Because we don't always get company. <laughs> All right. We like to keep you here. There. <laughs> We're keeping Marcus, though. Um, <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Uh, our last public hearing. Wait. Oh, there's two more. No, I got two more. Oh, mercy. Put on my glasses. Okay. All right. Public hearing right now is on rezoning of 414 through 440 Ebert Street and 711 to 715 Maple Street. An application has been filed by Mr. Dean DeKrieger with DK Design Group on behalf of Munson Healthcare Cadillac Hospital for rezoning from R3 to OS2. Having read that, Mr. Walls. <laughs> okay, uh, this, uh, this case is probably quite familiar. Uh, the hospital has been through a previous rezoning for the Macaulay Center and essentially this uh, uh, rezoning is actually sort of a continuation of that rezoning uh, to pick up additional land in the immediate area uh, of the previous rezoning to, to the OS2. Um, the applicant's requesting a rezoning of six lots which are zoned OS1 or or R3 to an OS2 zoning district. So it's coming out of two different zoning districts into an OS2 district. Mm -hmm. uh, these include lots 9 and 10 of block 20. Those are the two remaining lots on the Macaulay Center block, and I'll have a map in a minute, as well as lots 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 of block 21, which uh, essentially would be that uh, entire block with the exception of one property. Uh, the proposed use of the property is a mixed-use office building and daycare uh, operation. Here's the site. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, the smaller red box is the two remaining lots on the Macaulay Center site. The Macaulay Center is uh, immediately uh, south of, of that small red block, and then the larger red block uh, is coming out of the R3 into the OS2, and as you can also see, uh, it takes up the entire block with the exception of one property. And you can see that uh, this rezoning makes sense. I've also included a blue outline which shows all the hospital ownership. So you can see with the exception of one lot, they are consolidating uh, all the blocks in the immediate area of the hospital uh, all to be within under one master planned area. All of the property which is subject to the rezoning is owned by Munson Healthcare uh, Hospital and is contiguous to the broader hospital campus. The entire campus is being used for the hospital, medical services, and accessory support uses. Uh, this rezoning would place all of the Munson owned property on blocks 20 and 21 in an OS2 zoning district. The entire Munson Healthcare campus would fall within either an OS1 or an OS2 zoning district. The OS2 zoning district would allow Munson Hospital greater flexibility in their long-term master planning for their future campus. This district allows the best flexibility for medical support offices and services as well as potential for residential use. Munson Healthcare is one of Cadillac's largest employers and is an economic driver not only for the city but for this area of the city. The OS2 district is the most appropriate district as the campus continues to grow in both the amount of medical services but also the range of medical services. Um, 
my recommended motion following the public hearing would be that the, uh, that the Planning Commission recommends to the City Council that this rezoning application, which involves two lots from Block 20, uh, zoned OS1, and five lots from Block 21, R3, be rezoned to the OS2 zoning district, thereby making that entire area in a, in a common district and a more flexible zoning district. And that's my brief presentation. And I just want to add a quick caveat to that. Our zoning administrator has indicated that he's heard from a resident off of Everett Street that is against the rezoning because of the perception that it could uh, hurt the uh, value of the property. And then uh, he has also heard uh, from two uh, folks uh, that believe that it'll actually increase the value of the property. So just feedback that we've received. Um, I believe anything we've received in writing is in your packet, but just additional communication that we've gotten over time. So. so is that now brought into the record good enough on that? I don't have to say people's names, right, and stuff? No. Okay. All right. Thank you for that, Marcus. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank Mike. He handed me the note. Like we're on the line. <laughs> so. Okay. Now, now that I've got that, I'm going to add. I heard from the daughter of an elderly lady that lives near the site, and she said her mom would be thrilled to hear that there's going to be children playing and making all kinds oh. of racket <laughs> um, because her mom, you know, had numerous children, and she said mom will be thrilled to hear their will be kids running around outside making all kinds of racket, which... It's nice she shared that. You know. So now you can tell them, outside, let it go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what would they be thinking if it's going to devalue property value and those who feel that it will increase their value? Is this just a matter of personal perception? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, if everybody's good, we'll open this public hearing on this, okay? All right, so at this stage, we'll open the public hearing here pertaining to uh, the rezoning here of what we just discussed uh, without me having to read all that again. And anyone wishing here to speak in favor, please come forward, and sir. Good evening, I'm Dean DeKrieger with the DK Design Group. Uh, I appreciate you hearing us again tonight and having a meeting. <laughs> hey, uh, Some of us were here. Yeah. Uh, I am just pointing out things that uh, obviously you're aware of. Uh, the rezoning, especially of the two lots adjacent to the Macaulay Center, uh, are really uh, a follow-up to the previous rezoning. Uh, in actuality, there were multiple property descriptions when this issue was actually caught as we were going to our last meeting, but it was too late to update it. We tried to include it then, so it really makes sense. Uh, the daycare work has been completed, and Little Bear has actually been licensed. Uh, I'm sorry, Macaulay uh, Daycare now has finally been licensed, and they uh, will be seeing children Monday, is my understanding, so that's uh, great news. Uh, as John pointed out, this property across the street, which is currently R3, is really part of the Munson campus. And that's the intent, is that the campus be zoned uh, in the most flexible manner. Uh, there is some discussion of putting a, a playground uh, across the street on the what would be the very northwest corner of that property, possibly. Currently, if you go by the uh, Macaulay Center now, you'll see that there is a space outside uh, that is fenced, which is actually on the asphalt, but that is sufficient uh, for licensing for children to be outside. But the hope is that we could create something that's a little bit grassier. Uh, but that is the uh, immediate intent. The long range plan is that this gives flexibility to uh, Munson Healthcare Cadillac Hospital to develop that property as they see fit and as best for the community. Thank you. Uh, Dean, question? Uh, yes. Uh, if and when you move the playground facility, will it be enclosed in a fence area? It will be fenced in. And again, playground is 
probably a, a bit of a stretch. I don't know that they're planning any playground equipment or things like that. It is really a, an open area to be outside. Uh, and as I understand it from the experts, uh, part of the reason they want them out is for simply for even their immune systems and being outside and uh, having that time outside. Correct? Correct. Sure. All right. Any other questions? Anything else for Mr. McCrager? Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Ladies, any comments? You're good. <laughs> so how soon are kids coming in? Yeah. No kidding. How many? 72. <laughs> are what we're licensed for. Oh, licensed for. But 72 aren't showing on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> we started enrollment yesterday. We have 11 currently enrolled. 11, nice. Um, all Munson employees? So far. So the far. first two weeks of enrollment are for Munson employees, and ah. we open enrollment for the public on the 29th. Got it. And they had their ribbon cutting today, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so the nice. facility itself is ready for the in mm -hmm. onslaught, so to speak? <laughs> Cool. Wow. It's a nice building. I know that. I've been there. All right. Got to keep us on track. All right. Anyone here uh, against the rezoning for the health care, for the kids? Sorry. <laughs> that being a no. Okay. We can close public hearing now. Okay. Now, now we can discuss again. Okay. Cool. Any comments? Anybody? What? Uh, yeah. Me. Joe? Uh, what's the impact on the the Hughes property is the one piece that's I think outside. I the last house there would be my guess because that's where Have we heard from the Hughes or? Hughes guys right there. Yeah. yeah. We heard from him when we had our very, very first yeah. public hearing last year. Um, I have gone out of my way to make sure he's gotten and everybody have gotten their public notices and uh, <laughs> we've not heard again from him. I mean, he said his piece back then and okay good if I'm not mistaken I think he was in favor of um, his only concern was the playground and not the rezoning right. That's correct. correct right okay thank he you he does have a couple large dogs but he does have a nice fence and, <laughs> and they've got to put one up anyway yeah yeah, yeah. but he's going to be at the opposite end of them Anyway, he is. He is. So. Yeah, may I address that? that? Sure. That was one of the components that we talked about is if and when this happens, we are intending to put it actually as far away on that property from his property as possible. There is a okay. actually a uh, alley through there that right. has not been vacated yet even, so we're significant distance from his property if this happens. Good. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's kind of a no-brainer as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. That's a good thing tonight. Okay. Can I? You sure I make can. A recommendation is, is up on the planning commission recommends the city council that the rezoning application, which involves two lots from block 20 and OS1 and five lots from block 21, zoned R3, be rezoned to the OS2 zoning district. Support. I, I do have one question. Though. <laughs> too no, late. No, no, just, <laughs> it just reminded me of the picture. Why is there two lots under the parking lot? There are actually multiple lots oh, yeah. on there, and those are the last two on that block that were in a different property description, and that's really what's yeah. happening here is when we submitted the first application, the property description we had we thought was all inclusive, but there were two lots missing. Right. So, so houses that are now gone. Yeah. It was, I, they were still good with the recommendation. Yeah. I was just, it just popped in my head. We thought we had done it correctly, but we didn't give the public notice appropriately. Uh, well, and but the, it was, though. Fully, yeah, but it it was. didn't include those two Oh, no, lots, it didn't so. include those lots. Correct. So while Correct. the motion included it. There. It the wasn't presented. Yeah. Put it all under Correct. one property description. Yeah. But those, there were two houses there. Fred Casper had bought those years ago and moved them out of town. Right. Okay. Okay, blame, still blame, the, still blame that on Now, COVID. this is recommendation to council, so the board <laughs> knows McCoy. we're <laughs> recommending this to council. That's correct. Okay. Support. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Wilkins. Yes. Bunce. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bauman. Yes. Greg. Yes. Fent. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Hudson. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Can we come visit?
<laughs> Hopefully, no, 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 you don't want to visit. <laughs> there are lots of kids there. Yeah, I know. No, no, I'm talking no, about I, the I deal with kids. Oh, I was going to say they're all sick and they're <laughs> running around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah good night. Uh, sorry, it took so Thank long. You. Before I forget, congratulations yep. on your 20 years. Take care. Thank you. Well. Sitting there. Didn't you get your letter? No. You've been on the planning commission for three years. me. Does it feel like that? There's a, there's a uh, get together from all the people. You're and quit. Uh, Wait, that doesn't happen every month. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be honoring you next month for one month of service. Club, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess I didn't get my letter. <laughs> you weren't invited to. I wasn't invited. Oh, that's it. <laughs> he, he talks too much. <laughs> That was a surprise. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. All right. But I want to congratulate that. Wow. Flies when I'm having fun. I don't remember how many years I have on this. All right, we have our last public hearing is on proposed text amendments for accessory uses. Okay. This change <coughs> essentially would impact on uh, non residential accessory uses so this it, it's we written to uh, address more commercially oriented uh, or industrial oriented uh, accessory uses basically uh, while well, I can read it it says accessory uses to non-residential uses may be approved on a lot which is separate from the lot on which the primary use is located if such lot is directly contiguous uh, or contiguous across a public street right away and within the so same zoning district classification. Such a accessory uses shall be accessory to a use permitted by right and which is operating from within an enclosed building. Is this in our packet? Yeah, we're all yeah, floundering up here. Some. I got one, it's just a single page. Yeah. yeah. It was in the big packet, not in the... I wasn't exactly oh, giving oh, a big package. I'm sorry, no. David's got one. Um, I, I don't know. And, and again, this this is uh, looking ahead to some of the uses which uh, may be anticipated by the hospital uh, uh, on that property. You know, it, it could apply to parking. It could, uh, you know, apply to a number of different things. And the idea being that if if somebody like the hospital is looking on more of a master plan or campus plan, uh, not all the, not all the time will they have all their property within an individual lot, but they might be owning multiple blocks or large properties that are uh, where they're using both facilities. We have some of this in the industrial park where the industry is on uh, one property, the parking is on a different property. Uh, so it would it would affect a situ you know situations like that, but it only it affects it, it allows accessory uses to be well essentially what it's conditioned there they have to be in the same zoning classification they have to be uses permitted by right and uses that are uh, not only permitted by right but being undertaken within an enclosed building so there's a lot of cap caps on how this provision could be used. And it couldn't be used for residential. We have a long history of not allowing garages to be built on residential lots in advance of uh, a principal home being built. But we do see a number of need for, you know, uh, say, uh, commercial, institutional, or industrial uses uh, needing to uh, have accessory uses. So. If it has to be, if it's already permitted, if it has to be something that's permitted in the zoning district already, what's the importance of the accessory use section itself? I'm, that's, uh, I'm just, even at its base, I'm confused. I guess I don't understand the question. So y you mentioned that an accessory use has to already be permitted in the, zo the zo um, zoning classification, no, which the it is. The use that it's accessory to has to be permitted by right on the parcel that is located oh, okay on. but now we're looking at another site that's contiguous but across the right of way it might be zoned differently uh well it could be uh as in the case of 
the case we just took, they just unified their zoning classification across the street. And so had that rezoning hadn't taken place, or, or you know, when the council approves it, then some of the accessory uses that they might consider for that property would not be allowed to be considered without the provision of this new text amendment. It okay. seems like a way to get around the zoning limitations. Well, it's recognizing that there's an intrinsic difference between how the magnitude of uses and how they function and operate. It is much more common for large users, industrial users, institutional users to have multiple properties and multiple uh, and be on multiple blocks and they're trying to assemble what they need to to operate and they can't always put a principal building on every lot that they might that they might own and so if they need a if they need something connected to their business that needs to be there to support that business uh, and they've tried to assemble <coughs> parcels that eventually make up a campus it would be very difficult to uh, have that happen uh, if you made them build a principal use on every lot that they wanted to build uh, have an accessory use you were using the hospital John as an example right could you dive a little deeper into how that might come about in terms of an overall yeah. campus <coughs> that might be helpful for the commission to you mean in terms of the hospital uses yeah sure well I mean the hospital um, in this scenario like take the playground take additional parking because of the daycare center if they wanted to do that um, it would be accessory to the it, it wouldn't be a primary use so they couldn't just go and build a parking lot or build a playground on these properties because there's no principal use on the on the parcel and so this allows them to have supporting uses on property that are direct that's directly contiguous it can't be far removed from the property it can't be down <coughs> down the block uh, and we somewhat already do that in, in a sense by the fact that we created something called a parking district uh, but you know <laughs> Uh, we've allowed people to say, well, mm. it, we could rezone that into, but it just seems like an, an extra step that probably isn't needed to rezone into a parking district mm -hmm. if we could uh, allow for these accessory uses to be uh, reviewed and approved uh, under the accessory use review. So if I can try to help clarify the way I hear it, and yeah, John right. will kick me under the table if I'm going the wrong direction here. Right. But in, in using the hospital again as the, the most recent example is the Planning Commission just approved action essentially that helps put the hospital in a position to one day have, have a, a, a nice campus in the community. You know, the hospital is in the process, or they have been in the process of acquiring a lot of property to create that campus type of, of setting uh, to support their uses. They certainly are going to have individual lots that may just be set up one day in the future for um, an accessory use or a use that's defined as an accessory use as John said it's gonna just be a parking lot maybe they put a deck somewhere or it's gonna be a, a playground or it's going to be storage unit a storage unit or or a place where they're gonna stick a generator I, I'm just picking things out of the sky where there's you know nothing else on that lot other than that accessory and this is use. all in support of the right. main correct it's all in support that, of the main reason going, yeah. which would be the, the the hospital itself so as long as it met the um, as long as it met the definition of the section that's being recommended this evening that being that it is contiguous to um, the the primary use it would be something that would be allowed so it's it's, it's all contained within that plan that they've got for developing like you said the camera right if you wanted to go further I, I mean I suppose you could add either even further language I didn't want to try to lock it down too much and leave no flexibility I thought I went far enough requiring the same same zoning district uh, either contiguous directly or contiguous directly across the street so 
you couldn't have lots in between and do this. So you couldn't own this block, skip four lots, and then do something else and have it apply to that. You would have to be directly contiguous. Now, you start to limit its effectiveness if you go too far. You could, for instance, say in furtherance, you can do this in furtherance of a, an entity that has a ma you know, a master campus plan or something like that. Um, so that might make be fine for the hospital, but could an industry that wanted to locate their parking lot across the street, could you call that a campus plan? I mean, I suppose it's, how, it's all in how you define it, right? So maybe my confusion simply comes down to the necessity to have accessory use defined. Is it because every property needs a primary use? Right. Yes, that, that's right. that's the yeah. intrinsic okay, that's starting where point. That's, where I'm yeah. Yeah. That, right. that's yes. the intrinsic starting point for all our zoning. That every lot is supposed to have a principal use, which means a, stru a primary structure. And then once you have that primary structure, then you can start having accessory use. That's the key. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm yes. with you. Yeah, that's right. I understand. But that still will be looked at for the use, <coughs> right? Is this what this? They're just not enabled to do it. See, that's that was my question. Are, are you updating this so that? it would allow them to make those decisions without bringing it before the Planning Commission? Well, uh, right now it wouldn't, but you can certainly make that a condition of this language. No. Oh. So Just, if, they want, if they wanted to yeah. build a parking garage for the vehicles, lawnmowers, whatever, across the street, that's fine. That's what you're talking about right now. That, that would be one of a number of things that they could do. To build that building, they'd have to come before us and, and, and request uh, the ability to build that? Well, right now they they wouldn't come to this board. It would be more of an administrative approval. Okay. Now, if you want to start <coughs> attaching standards to being able to do this, then that that. No, I I was just That's asking true. the question. Yeah. I was thinking that it had to come back. Would, would no, it wouldn't. Back? It would right now. It wouldn't come back before and this board. To just raise my hand and and throw another spin on all of this. The city is in the process of becoming redevelopment ready certified. While that process is not germane necessarily to the action that you're taking tonight, I can attest that some of the future changes and recommendations that we're going to need to consider and adopt in order to achieve the certification that the state of Michigan is requiring that we comply with in order to become or remain eligible for various grant programs and other things is that we do more things essentially by right or administratively versus going through the uh, red a board process. So I, I'm not trying to say that all of those things are going to be removed from this type of venue, uh, but there are going to need to be a few tweaks here and there to sort of modernize our, our codes uh, that streamlines how projects come in and, and out of, of the city. So this is... Well, not this action does not directly get us to a higher level or, or being closer to being certified. It it sort of is within that vein of of what we're doing. So, in in your work getting us closer to that certification, um, our designation. I apologize. Have have you seen this in other communities? Yes. That they've added it. Okay. All right. Yeah. The the by right is is a common theme that is being amended okay. into other communities uh, code system in order to streamline approval processes for um, uh, for projects okay. so it's the current trend and 10 yeah. years from now they'll tell us we got to go back the other way so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah as I kid but it helps get us this would help get us closer to that designation uh, this this may not <coughs> directly help that but it's certainly along the same vein that they're having us head towards so okay. but you're but, but if I understood this but nobody's really overseeing it so if oh. somebody thinks they can do this they can do this no it would still come in well I mean but these guys right now we do uh, yeah. we do administrative site plan review of all commercial things if you wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that you could add that language to this without it adding a lot of time frame because it usually only takes us about a week to do an administrative review. So if, if, 
if you wanted this accessory use on a different lot to have that administrative review, we could certainly add that to this language. And I don't think that would uh, hurt us in the way of a uh, time frame. I mean, it, it's one more little step, uh, but it, it doesn't require public hearings. It doesn't require extra meetings, well, except for the staff. But uh, in some of these things that might be more significant, it might be appropriate to do that. As well, opposed neighbor to had an issue with they got wind of something going on across the street from them that was in this area. Uh, they could come and talk to you guys about it and say, I don't really like this in my name or, mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. I'm just wondering if there's any recourse for a resident who might be across the street from an accessory building that might pose a problem. Well, they could maybe influence what we asked for in the way of how it's done, but there, you know, if it was a reasonable thing, we would probably respect this and allow it to go in. Um, what they could hope to accomplish is maybe some concessions on the design or buffering or, or that sort of thing. So if and that might, that language and it'd come to you and you guys. So that might be another reason to maybe spell out that, uh, um, you know, our uh, administrative, our normal administrative site plan review uh, that that takes place just within the office would, would apply to this situation. I think that would be appropriate. Because, mm -hmm. like, say, if somebody had a concern. I think it needs yeah. the oversight. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. So, so, I mean, I guess what you could do then is just say that you recommend this change. Uh, to the city council with the uh, addition that uh, any uh, such accessory uses applied for under this provision receive the uh, standard administrative site plan review uh, from the department heads mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. civil engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Be good with that. yeah, I like that. W one additional note, if you don't mind, I, I, I don't think sub 11 is a, is a definition of an accessory use. So I, from a codification standpoint, the first sentence should probably be like A. I don't know how they're actually codified, but this is a standard of approval as opposed to a, a definition of a use. And the first sentence says these are uses. Does that make sense? Uh, so create a separate section. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like a section. Or, yeah. or A and B, I mean, so that okay. it's, it's just it's not a use. Yeah. Okay. So. That's simple. Do we have to vote on this? Uh, well, actually, it's, in all honesty, it's public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot yeah, of we got to open the floor. Oh, uh, got to open it up. Okay. Open it up. Uh, at, the time, <laughs> at this time, we'll open public hearing here on the proposed tax amendment for accessory uses. So as we have discussed with staff, uh, it's details. Um, <clears throat> Anyone in our audience uh, <laughs> speak in favor, and that being a no. Uh, anyone in our audience uh, object, and that being a no. At this time, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing so we can proceed. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> that verbiage was, how did you want that? And let's move. <laughs> a motion. Well, the motion would be to uh, <coughs> recommend... Uh, the change to the uh, to section 46 uh, 657 accessory uses as presented with the uh, following additions that uh, any such accessory uses being considered under this provision uh, undergo the standard site plan administrative review process and that um, uh, as the uh, the present, the uh, it be broken into its own separate section to clarify uh, that it's uh, uh, a process rather than uh, identified use. I'll so we have to undergo a review process by the yeah. department heads. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yep. the oh, who made that motion? So who made the motion? Mr. Bunce, make that motion, or did that's what I, what he said. Yeah, yeah I make he that said motion. and seconded by Mr. Smith. Yes. Okay. Who, Roll, please. Who made the motion, Dave? Uh, yes. Okay. Philkins. Yes. Smith. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Bunce. Yes. Greg. Yes. Wallman. Yes. Fent. Yes. Butford. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now for the drum roll, the moment we've been waiting for. 
Oh. Time to adjourn? No. Oh, it's great. What? You don't have a new business. <laughs> Under new business, correct. What you got? We, we, we have a one of our high esteemed people of the city with us this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. To the yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I don't know yet. If you look it over and find out, I don't know if John is. <laughs> okay. Um, so under new business, we have our city manager this evening, Marcus, and he yes. floor is his. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Commission. I appreciate uh, the time you're allotting to me. Uh, it'll only be an hour or so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that, is that Drinks okay? are on Marcus yeah. afterwards. Yeah. We've missed a couple of minutes. Yeah. We're good to yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, three minutes. Yeah. So uh, the, the long and the short of it is that the city has several industrial parks within, the, within our borders. One of them, the Podfin Industrial Park, is a certified industrial park, certified through MEDA. MEDA is the Michigan Economic Developers Association. Um, MEDA, every few years, uh, audits the parks that they certify and advise if there are any changes necessary in order for uh, said communities to uh, retain that certification. MEDA has advised that we do need to tweak the restricted covenants for the park in order for the park or the city I should say to retain that certification. Uh, the tweak has to deal with section 3b uh, identified as storage. What you should have in front of you is a copy that is indicated uh, with my handwriting I, I apologize it says original. Um, the uh, recommendation um, is to essentially delete that and then replace that section uh, with the second uh, handout that you have. Uh, the covenants require the Cadillac Industrial Fund to be in support in addition to uh, the Planning Commission and in addition to three-fourths of the uh, lot owners or landowners on the site. Um, all of those have been met assuming of course that we we have the um, uh, support from the Pla Cadillac Planning Commission as well. The tweak that MEDA has requested deals with outside storage uh, specifically. Uh, currently any outside storage in the park needs to be within a building unless it's a raw material. If it's a raw material there are no restrictions or, or anything in, in the current covenants. The tweak is that that's not acceptable anymore. They need to be screened uh, through landscaping or fencing or something. Uh, it's a very reasonable request. This request is not one that is for citywide uh, screening. This is specific just to the Potvin Park. Again, the only park that we have that's certified. Uh, and so that's why I'm here this evening. Uh, asking for your consideration and supporting uh, that change. And the potential motion uh, uh, for consideration would be a motion to approve the First Amendment to protective covenants and restrictions for the James E. Poffin Industrial Park in regard to removing and replacing Section 3B storage. No, I think it's a good request for anybody that wants to drive around the industrial park, and it looks nicer. So, just as the rookie here, what's is uh, Rockport Holdings within the industrial they, park? They are not. Uh, oh, yeah. Current okay. park inhabitants include uh, Spencer Plastics okay. and Piranha Hose Products. Okay. Ryan, if I might add, the current zoning ordinance when it comes to the outdoor storage. Uh, in, in our industrial areas, it explicitly uh, mentions the type of screening if it abuts residential zone districts. So that's already required. Mm -hmm. um, but you take a rec bulk holding, it's surrounded by other industrial properties. Sure. Okay. Um, three small edits on the, the storage language th to be replaced. Mm -hmm. I think in the first line, it should be completely as opposed to completed. Your new new language. My eyes went to that too, Joel. So that's good. Um, third line, missing the word B after May. Uh, I just I'm going to repeat it and make yep. sure I'm catching the edits. Yep. Uh, first line, strike completed, make it completely. Correct. 
third line, uh, what was it? Products may be located. Okay. And then the next line um, says not less than six feet nor. I think it should be but not more. Okay. That was it for me. No, I'm a lawyer. It's worse. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> this was written by a lawyer. Wow. No, you go. Get no, your money back. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Joe. Again. With those edits, I would make the motion. Mr. Go Chair. for it. I'll support. That's supported by Ms. Cookin. <laughs> <coughs> do we need a yes? No. Of course we do. Greg. Greg. Yes. <laughs> Greg's asleep. Smith. Yes. yes. Bauman. Yes. Bunce. Yes. Bent. Yes. Schultz. Yes. Philkins. Yes. Hutt. Yes. <laughs> We're getting there. Thank you. Okay, old business there being none. Board member comments. We have a new board member. Uh, hopefully, you know, welcome here, Ryan Schultz. <laughs> and uh, ho hopefully you've met everybody or anyway. Welcome aboard anyway. Uh, I do have a weird question. Who in God's name owns the solar panel down by Midtown? Mike does. <laughs> does does the, the property and, owner and, there and, own and that? Sorry. Uh, was, I was teasing. Can Mike anyone just have one that. of those? <laughs> I, it's 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 certainly a an item that you know our zoning currently makes reference to uh, that type of a thing as an accessory structure. So, for example. Uh, accessory structures of certain sizes are allowed. It is under that size. Uh, they also have to be so many feet away from neighboring property lines, alley, etc. Um, but it certainly is an accessory um, type of structure that our ordinance at this time does not, you know, certainly doesn't. Um, it's it's it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a non-traditional accessory structure. It's, it's non-traditional. Arguably, we perhaps could have gone in a different direction versus allowing it once you now see it there. Sure. Uh, sure. And should another request come in, oh, yeah. I'm not certain it would be it's visible. Be permitted. So. so that came in front of council. No. 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 It it's, came in front of administrator. It's classified that. as an accessory <laughs> structure. <laughs> Remember what we just did with accessory uses? Yeah. We just, gave them the uh, right to do it. We just covered the holes. It's not so much a use as, a, as a structure. We probably have a need to adopt solar panel regulations because this is a, a Companies example are of what happens when you. advertising to yeah. residents. Yeah. 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 So yeah. we should. Big, yeah. big time. Yeah. Big, yeah. Yeah. The, the, other, the other thing, too, is that there's a big movement now to try to figure out ways for individual single family homes to support their individual energy use mm -hmm. not not have extra use to sell to anybody else no. but to support their own use whether that's a combination of roof mounted or yard mounted mm -hmm. and but then you got once you decide that if you're going to have non roof mounted you got to decide where it's going to be is it going to be only in the rear yard what are the setbacks and so forth and that's that's the piece that we haven't gone through and we really need to go through. Or even panel mount that we've seen them on the sides. Yeah. Right. And also that has a lot to do window. with what is no the problem for you. Accessibility to the light. <laughs> you might you know, have trees some trees backyard. Some, <laughs> some, <laughs> some front yard down guard the way. Right. You know, I mean, so yeah, you there are considerations. Oh, God. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for those explanations. Um, the uh, fitness uh, building, is, uh, I know why it's at the standstill, but is, is that going to do anything other than uh, stay there for the power lines to still go over it? Just question. The um, 412 Cadillac? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, while we're not <clears throat> aware of any current or future tenants that are planning to move in, um, it's our understanding that there is going to be 
additional work done on it this coming construction season to make it more attractive to get a buyer or a much. tenant. The the developer, Solar whether or not it's it's uh, just information or or concern on his part, indicated to me verbally that that he was waiting to receive the brownfield acceptance from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation that his plan was approved. Um, the city is able to, and I know this is going to sound somewhat strange coming out of my mouth, but move at a lightning pace in comparison <laughs> to how other government agencies are able to process and go through their procedures. And so while we took care of all of the um, you know, checkoff boxes that we had to, got all of the legislative approvals that we had to through, you know, three different bodies, the Downtown Development Authority, the Cadillac Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, and the City Council. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff gets packaged up, and then essentially a new application gets <coughs> made. It then gets reviewed, essentially, when, it, when its number on the list gets up to when they're ready to review it. Uh, and, and they is an agency of the state that then makes the final determination whether or not they're going to accept all of the other information, all of the other parts to the, to the puzzle to make it work. So that basically just happened about a month ago. So it doesn't stop people, though, if they wanted to, from moving forward on their projects because the state is also very lenient in terms of allowing people to move ahead and will essentially retroactively authorize awards, if that makes sense. So we have people that, you know, are six months down the road and then get their notification, okay, yes, it's been accepted, and then everything's great. Th this developer wanted to make sure he had the paperwork in line before starting, and plus it was winter. So, but hopefully it'll... Pop, something will happen. Yeah. Other comments? Do what? Other comments? Yeah. I, I was curious. Uh, also, the other gentleman didn't must not have gotten his tax approval uh, uh, down there by Hegstrom's and stuff to do the yes. uh, senior. So house. yeah. So yeah. the um, the castle. Yeah. Mi Michigan State Housing Development Authority um, evaluated their request and grouped the project. Uh, into categories that were competing with projects going on in Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids and other major cities because they simply looked at the population of Cadillac and while it's not in statute, um, their operating policy says if you're over 10,000, you're going to now go with the big boys. And so, unfortunately, it didn't get approved that way. MISHTA also then provided the developer with some comments about how they uh, believe their, their independent housing study versus the studies that the developer produced uh, to show that perhaps they don't need full, you know, 50 units, but maybe a few less, asked for a little bit of a reworking of the site plan. So all in all, there's a resubmittal. It's still going to be a four-story building. There's still going to be two-bedroom units. Instead of it being 40 to 50 units, now I think it's around 35 to 40 units. Uh, it's going to also be evaluated in a grouping of much smaller municipalities because of a, of a, a different way of funding the project. There was an option for the developer to pick a different path um, versus the funding model he had initially uh, had proposed. And by picking this alternative route, uh, that allowed MISTA to essentially relax their uh, 10,000 um, uh, capita threshold for population. So there is going to be, if it hasn't yet already happened, a meeting this April in which the project is going to be evaluated. He likely isn't going to know until sometime end of May or June as to whether or not it is going to receive um, uh, the credits that they've applied for. The um, uh, cautious optimism that's being shared is that is that it, it will receive it because of the ads, moves, and changes that were made. Uh, so assuming that that does happen, it would be anticipated that, that you perhaps see some earth moving later this summer or fall. I hope so. That's yeah. a great application in that area. 
Yeah. 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 Even though blocks the air, the wind. Are they going to move the tattoo house? <laughs> the DQ. So uh, my understanding is they did acquire um, right. that property. The uh, yeah, uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know the timing of when they're going to do any form of demolition or anything mm -hmm. like we'll that, that at this point. Like there, there, there are no permits on file yet regarding any any construction or demolition mm -hmm. related activities. But it certainly would be be great to see. And then certainly yeah. there's the lofts project. Um, that project uh, cannot begin its its vertical construction until such time that all of the pieces fit together like a nice jigsaw puzzle uh, in terms of the various uh, incentives, incentives at all levels of government, um, you know, federal, you know, state and local, um, have to be in a certain position within certain periods of time in order for them to then finally begin that, uh, that vertical construction. And so um, as things are, are getting um, finalized now, uh, based upon all the action the city council took yesterday evening, uh, and based upon an estimate of when um, the developer believes the State of Michigan Strategic Fund is going to be meeting to analyze uh, uh, some of the uh, incentives that they're also in front of them for, it's believed that they'll be able to, to actually start going up uh, this July, likely. So later this summer. Good. So Those big tanks they found. Yes. Surprise. <laughs> there. Yeah, nice. I'm sure it They was. were surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what were the, they from? The tanks. It was they were uh, oil former, tanks for, yeah, former yeah, for the businesses oil. that were there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Big, big, so the whole yeah. the whole project site is a brownfield. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they haven't that even gotten to underneath no. the dry cleaner yet. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's that's part two. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a tremendous amount of uh, grant funding that they've already received uh, through the State Department of Environmental Quality, uh, plus loan funding that they've received through that agency as well. The state's been great to work with, uh, incredibly collaborative. Um, you know, between uh, the nearly it's a four hundred ninety nine thousand um, dollar brownfield grant. Uh, plus uh, 260000 I think, dollar brownfield loan, uh, all through the DEQ that they've gotten, in addition to um, uh, uh, about an $830,000 community development block grant. Uh, you know, the city, the developer, and the state have worked truly in a public-private partnership to bring all the resources to bear, you know, to, to make this thing happen. So and it just... We're just excited that it'll hopefully move forward sooner than later. So. I have a question about the the old Widener's building where G&D is going. Do they own the property behind that that would connect that pro that building with Lake Street? Do they own all the way back? No. No, they do not. Okay. There's, I think, about three or four owners of a lot of that property. Okay. Is the county county might be one of them? Not, no. not, I'm not sure, but I looked into it at one point, and I think there was at least three to four owners back there. Well, I just, I remember at one time they, somebody had mentioned the, uh, the concept of having a drive-through, and I don't, I'm just wondering how they would accomplish it if they don't. They have, they have plenty of room to do they? with that alley. Yeah, so the alley oh. that comes up behind our store, which is paved. Okay. And uh, I met with Mr. Kurtzman, he was checking things out, and apparently the fencing south of us and there's that kind of garage that's dilapidated but it's yes. still in the fencing uh -huh. apparently that fencing and that garage are coming down okay so technically right somebody could come up that back alley and by the uh -huh. actually those, those so that fencing will be gone mm -hmm. they, they, they have not come in for any kind of site plan review so if any of this is planned I hope they know they have to come in. Well because. maybe somebody should connect with them so we can start those conversations now Rather than, you know, in the eleventh hour. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they've oh, it. oh yeah, they're gutted. changing a lot. I know, but mm -hmm. do they have to change anything through us to put a pizza parlor in there? I don't, I don't know. Think so. I don't think so. It's, it's, uh, it's commercial. It's, it's zone B three. Yeah. It's zone B three. Oh, okay. They have, you know, I'm, I, there certainly are things that they would have to have administratively reviewed, or possibly even through the zoning board of appeals. <coughs> Maybe I, I'm just suggesting that maybe we could reach out to them and offer support so they know that it's here if they need it. Yes. 
Well, we did originally. Uh, originally, uh, I developed site plans for their project, and then they never came in to even review the project. Oh. So uh, at some point in time, they looked away from the city and looked to others to uh, to get their their input. But um, I have a site plan for their project sitting on my computer files right now. Okay. All right. I, well, I was just the, curious. I asked Mr. Kurtzman, I'd like to see your blueprint of what you're doing. His comment, I would too. It's <laughs> 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 so not there. really working. Uh, well, not quite that, that, that close. There. Yeah. Him and Mark. Well, and I, I think it's, it's important just to, to share publicly, as we still are in a public meeting, that um, the phase one of the development occurring on the former Olson property is on the opposite corner from where they're currently mm -hmm. located in. And it's being designed in a way where the um, their current operation can continue to operate, even with mm -hmm. phase one, phase one being building one, mm -hmm. um, up, and up, up, up and built. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's uh, you know, of interest or the prerogative of the pizza shop to continue to be there uh, while building one is open and operational or if they're looking at vacating and, and opening up their new spot uh, beforehand but mm -hmm. obviously we'll work with them in developing you know whatever they need to, to, to get done so I think there was other comments there but you want to ask mr. Kurtzman because that that wasn't how it was presented to me mm -hmm. but since we are in a public thing yes. hi can I speak quickly? I want Please. to congratulate this group. Um, at our last Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, at the end, we took just a minute, and I showed a few photos of what the uh, Ace Hardware site looked like a year ago, mm -hmm. back in February, mm -hmm. prior to going before the Zoning Board of Appeals mm -hmm. for a lot coverage variance for um, the ZBA. They made a condition. They wanted that God Ugly pole sign by Mitchell Street removed and go with wall signs. and. Of course, it then came here for rezoning recommendations, uh, went to city council, and boy, when you look at what's happened in 14 months, it's a great example of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, the Planning Commission, city council, the public, everybody just going on board, and that dilapidated, ugly site is a beautiful site beautiful. now. Mm -hmm. It is, agreed. And I know in May, I think they're gonna do uh, you know, the asphalting and striping, but I know he wanted to open now so that he doesn't miss out on some of the spring business. Right. But, I mean, this group's to be congratulated like everybody else because that was one ugly site 14 months ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, agreed. I spent an hour wandering through there, and, boy, he's got the place loaded, and staff is up and running, and it's, it's a nice, nice location, and it's, like, I agree with you, it's real nice. It's pretty. Okay. I do have another comment. I forgot John Smith. He, he's also going. You got 15 years in now? 10, I think. 10? You got 20? I don't know.